Hi there, welcome. <laughs> so if you're new here, you may not know that I am pretty terrible at doing things on time, especially more so after I started working full time. So it's not a surprise that in my hands currently is an art snacks box from September, not 2019, but 2018. <laughs> I'm going to go over the items in more details later when I swatch, but the first item that I did pull out is a full tube of M. Graham watercolour paints in a massive 15ml tube of Naples Yellow. Then I have a set of three brush pens from the Zebra Sensation range in super fine, fine and medium. These have a felt tip like, well tip, <laughs> rather than real brush bristles. The items in this box are usually all wrapped up in beautiful lime green tissue paper. But I actually unwrapped this box when I first received it and filmed swatches and then I completely forgot about it under all the other boxes on my shelf. And I also lost the footage of it so here we go again. <laughs> there is a Faber-Castell, <laughs> this is such a hard name, Albrecht Durr, I think, uh, Magnus, aka a watercolour pencil but it's giant and it's in phthalo blue. I have a few of the normal size pencils, so here is a comparison between the Normie and Chunky Boy. The sticker of September 2018, which is printed on nice thick vinyl sticker paper. We don't actually have these kind of notebooks in New Zealand, but I have seen them often on American notebooks, so uh, I guess it's school notebook theme. And finally, a teeny weeny Princeton synthetic stable brush inside Zero Round. Apparently, at the time, this was meant to be a art snack exclusive, but I don't know if it is anymore. Alrighty, so with the swatches, I'm not sure the brush pens are too interesting. They're just black inky pens, but have a felt tip point, which creates a huge variety of line width. Honestly. If my calligraphy was a bit better, then I think I would have a better insight on these pens for the line sizes. But since I only use these to fill in large areas of my drawing, it doesn't concern me too much. Next, the Faber Castell Albrecht Durr. Durr. How do you even pronounce the two dots? <laughs> um, I'm just gonna ignore the two dots. Magnus. It dissolves so well with water that the original pencil marks are, are almost no longer visible. The thing that I did find somewhat annoying, well, not so much annoying but weird or off-putting, was that the amount of bubbles that came out when it was mixed with water on paper. But they eventually do disappear when it dries. And the best part of this box, the M. Graham paint tube. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I've been wanting a tube or a set of paint from this brand for the longest time possible. It's always sitting in my Amazon cart and I'm not able to buy it since the stores don't provide shipping to New Zealand, even prior to COVID. But I'm super excited to try it. <laughs> I heard so many good things about this brand and I always wonder why people raved about it and now I get the chance to try it out myself and find out. Okie dokie, so the colours that I got from this box really reminds me of a nighttime scene. I did come up with a couple of ideas two years ago and I remember one of them was about a ghost that was bound to a lantern in the middle of a forest which I really wanted to draw. The Naples yellow just gave me that nice warm vibe of a soft light and I know I was going to cheat a little bit by using the white of the paper for the ghost as an additional colour. So to warm up, I doodle some famous but cute ghosts from Nintendo games. Um, you may recognize them, but I decided they were too much of a round boy for my flowy ghost idea. When I was practicing the shape of the spirit particles, or whatever the flowy parts are, I thought it might be a little bit too boring of just one ghost trying to look super cute or sad or lonely or whatever ghosts do. So I decided to change the story a little bit. Maybe there is a ghost attached to the lantern and one is attached to the fire so they come alive every night and talk to each other until the morning comes up. Or maybe one of them is a wandering ghost that accidentally stumbled across the lantern and decided to stay and keep the lantern ghost company for the rest of their life. Do ghosts have lives? I don't know. 
or whatever equivalent goods have because it was the first time they both met something similar to themselves. Either way, they're meant to be friendly and it's supposed to be a sweet and happy story, despite using a creepy theme. The other thing that I was debating was the environment. Was it going to be in a forest clearing where there was a random field in the middle of the forest? Sort of like those anime where the people run through the thick forest and nobody ever finds this clearing, but then one day a little girl or whatever the main character is walks through three or four trees and then find this massive magical clearing full of a lot of grass. Or would it be just a forest surrounded by more trees? In the end, I picked something in between because of the mushrooms that I wanted to add onto the tree stump, which makes it more whimsical, so more greenery of both grass, bushes, and trees, as well as rocks, which I accidentally forgot, all combined would have brought the drawing together. This box may be super irrelevant now, but I still want to use the tools in it to complete a challenge since I have not been able to push myself to create anything creative as of late. Hopefully it'll shrug off the cobwebs and get me running again. <laughs> so especially the tube of Ingram paint. I'm gonna use it everywhere. <laughs> it's battery just like the color and lately I've been enjoying using yellows and neutral colors but on the lighter side something like buff titanium and I feel like this color goes hand in hand with them. Just a nice creamy color. What makes it even better is that it's not one of the usual colors that I would have picked or chosen for myself that I have in my collection already. So I know I'll probably use this paint more than uh, having it in something like cadmium red or ultramarine blue. Overall, I think this box was well worth it, especially for me. Someone who loves watercolors and I'm super glad I got the two colors that came in the box because they mix very well to make a really cute dull down green. The sketchbook that I'm using is a custom anatomy product that I have chosen 200 GSM multimedia paper for the front half and 300 GSM cotton paper for the last two parts. I am using the latter of the papers for this drawing. I, I don't really have much of an opinion on it yet. It's I mean, it's cute, it's reusable, my name's on the front, the cover is cotton, I can pick whatever colour and paper type or even plan a layout for the customization, and the customer service is amazing. However, the price is super expensive and there's currently not many options for artist features, so most of the covers are a plain colour like just pink rather than a drawing that an artist made, and the paper size is a little bit off. I can't figure it out but it feels narrow from either being too long or not fat enough with wise. <laughs> I'm not really sure what it is. Even looking at the footage confirms that something is a little bit off or different. I don't know. <laughs> I am enjoying it quite a lot at the moment but it could be just from using something new. I also used some masking fluid for the first time. Um, is it just me or does this stuff smell like fish that's been sitting in the sun for too long? Just fishy, it's it's not very pleasant. Anyway, that and a tool that removes the masking fluid easily without sanding your fingers off on the paper and leaving grubby oils that the watercolor wouldn't like. So the masking fluid is to reserve the smaller spirit particles that are a little time consuming to go around or I'll forget to go around. Whenever I don't do line work first with a water resistant fine liner and paint straight onto the paper with light sketching, I always forget little elements that I have drawn. That hasn't changed this time because I've painted part of the sky where the trees are meant to be as sky. It's not too noticeable unless you look really hard and think where the trees are meant to be. <laughs> also, instead of leaving the ghost plain white, which I think would have been boring since they take up most of the space in the illustration, I decided to paint them a very diluted version of the color that was supposed to be in the background. This is just to create a little bit of a transparency look to the ghost so they don't look like they've just been plastered onto the painting and actually belong. I found that layering was very easy using the watercolor pencil as paint essentially, which can be seen on the bushes. All that green of the same mixture and they got darker as they kept glazing and layering on top of each other. But the downside is that it bleeds so much on this paper. At least I think it's the paper. I'm, I'm not too sure. 
Using the same watercolour pencil, I lined the entire painting to keep the soft, whimsy look and to clean up and tie it all together. I was debating whether to use the black zebra sensation pens since they are much finer and can get into the bits and pieces that I want. But looking at how harsh and contrasty the lantern looks, I decided against it. I'm not sure if I made the right choice because I somehow went trigger happy with the pencil and should have stopped right after I finished the foreground. Yeah, those blue blushes on the ghost are visual signs of pure regret. <laughs> but overall, I like what I have created. But yeah, that is it. I thoroughly enjoyed this art snap box. I got so many boxes to go through and some of them have items and prompts that I'm afraid of. So I'm delaying it as much as possible. Hopefully not more than two years, but I can't promise anything. <laughs> but yeah, happy painting. Stay safe and until next time. Bye.